Let's create a basic network in Visio. We're in our templates and we see various different options. Let's click on Categories, and then we're going to choose the Network category, and we'll have several options to choose from that category. And here we choose the Basic Network Diagram. So we see two different ones here. This is the Basic Network Diagram, and this is the one in 3D. And you can see the shapes are a little bit different. If we look at the basic network diagram, it's more of a 2D top-down experience, whereas the 3D one is more of a side experience. I'm going to choose the 2D option and click the Create button on the blank template. On the left-hand side, we see lots of different shapes, network and peripherals, computers and monitors, quick shapes, and more shapes. I'm going to start in Network and Peripherals, and we have a couple of different ways we can create a basic network. The first one is to drag out an Ethernet pipe. The other way is to drag out a switch. Up until the late 1990s, many networks were in a ring pattern, but we have settled on TCP IP and Ethernet for 99% of our networks. So a star network makes the most sense. You can choose either of these. I prefer to choose the switch and make it the center of our network. If we choose Ethernet, we realize that everything is connected with Ethernet, but Ethernet itself is not an actual physical object we can touch. Next, we're going to bring out a server. And we see when we bring out the server that these lines line up with our switch. And this is a really nice feature because it tells us when we're perfectly aligned in any direction. I'm going to choose to put it at the top, and we can see our shapes don't have any names underneath them, but that's okay. We're going to fix that in a little bit. Now we know just about every network nowadays also has a wireless access point, so we'll put one of those out. And we probably also have a network printer. Let's go to computers and monitors and we'll bring out a PC. Now if we bring out a single PC, that basically means a single computer. However, if we bring out multiple PCs and we put them in this triangle pattern, what that generally means is we have a group of PCs, and we don't necessarily know how many they are, but there's an entire office of computers. Underneath it, you can place how many PCs you actually have, but in this particular case, it just shows a group of PCs. And from there, we can say, hey, we've got a lot of different PCs, in our network, and we're going to just represent them as three in a triangle. Now we see this bottom PC is behind the other two. If I would rather have that in front, I can select it and choose Bring to Front. And now it's in front of the other computers, which makes a little bit more sense for this. Another thing I like to do is to select all of them by left-clicking and dragging them, and I can right-click from here, and I can choose to group them together. So that way, if I decide to move anything, I'm now going to move all three of them at once. If I change my mind on that, I can just simply ungroup them as well. And then that'll split them apart once again. Now you'll notice that my entire group of computers and devices is all a little bit off-center. So if I left-click my mouse and drag it across all the different devices, I select them all at once. I can now move them so they'll be more centered. I can also select them and move them down because maybe I might want to have a title at the top. There we go. And I may not want to have them perfectly centered because I need room for that title. We're also going to need a firewall because we need a way to get out to the internet. So if we go back to our network and peripherals and we choose a firewall, I'm going to go and place this towards the bottom. And then we need an internet cloud, a way to get out to the internet. So I'm going to click on the search box. And instead of just looking for a cloud, I'm going to search for a cloud. And when that cloud shows up, I can pick the one that matches best and let go. Now we can see this is way too big. So I can simply go to the arrow in any of the corners, left click, and make them smaller. Now I've got a way out to the internet. I'm just going to adjust some of my other icons a little bit to make room for our internet devices. And now we're good. Next, let's tie these all together. From our switch, 
I could highlight that and go to the connector tool at the top. And now I can create a connection between all of my devices. And I can even go off to my firewall. And for my firewall, I can go out to my cloud. And now all of our different connections are set up, but we need some descriptions. Let's move some things around again, and what you'll find when you create a network diagram, or any type of diagram, is as you add icons, you realize that everything needs to be moved in order to make room for the new devices. Let's go back to the connector tool again, select all of our shapes, and look at that. That looks much cleaner. One thing that may bother some people is that all of our shapes are the same color. Well, we can fix that. For instance, all we have to do is select our server, and when we do, at the top, you see these different colors show up. So let's say that we'd like to go with a green server. And let's go down to our printer, and let's say that we would like to make that a gray shape. And then our wireless access point, we can choose any one of these other types of colors. Click on the firewall, and we can see, hey, you know what? It's missing some colors. Maybe we should add some different colors in here to make it more interesting. So if we go over to the Design tab, we can change the basic design colors. And as you see, as I scroll through, the all different colors change to whatever the design theme is going to be. I can also click on Colors here and choose this as well. I'm going to choose a different theme. There we go. And we'll go back home. And I'm going to click on my firewall. And I'm going to make it red. That makes more sense. Now our diagram is looking a lot sharper. And we need to have some names to go along with this. So what we'll do is we'll click on the text button. We've gone from the pointer to the connector and now to the text. So, for instance, we'll drag this underneath the firewall and just type in the word firewall. Now, if we want, we can also add in IP addresses, the firewall make and model, the version of the software, etc. And if we decide that the firewall name is just a little bit too small, we can go and click the plus button. We can also make it bold, or we can change the color of the text as well. I'm going to leave it as black because it is easy to read. And underneath here, I'm going to put in our network printer. And once again, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Select the text, make it larger, and make it bold. And we'll do the same. We'll put in network PCs. And here we'll put in our server. I've gone ahead and added the WAP and switch. And this is something interesting that happens sometimes is when you have a text box that you've added in, it doesn't always fit with the letters. You see, in this case, our H came down to the bottom. So what we can do is we can click to the pointer tool, and then we can drag this to the left, and then what happens is, is it expands the box, and now we have room for the entire word that says switch. The other good thing about switching back to the pointer tool is I can move these different boxes around if it turns out that they're not all centered or exactly where I want them. I'll go back to our text and I'll create a new box and I'll just type in company network. And I'm just going to change the color of that to be maybe the company main logo colors. I can even paste in the logo if I'd like change the size, the font, whatever it is I need to do. I can also change the background as well. So now we have a very attractive basic network diagram. Let's do one more thing and go to design, go to background, and let's choose an attractive background to go with it. And that change makes our company network a little bit more difficult to see, so we'll just make that a nice dark red. And when we save it, we can save it as a Visio diagram by clicking Save As and then choosing the Browse to the Location and choosing our desktop. 
and save it as a VSDX, which is a Visio diagram. However, if we're sharing this with people that are not Visio users, then we need to save it as something else. So we do File, Save As. And once again, we browse to our location. And then we can change this to something else that they can see even without Visio. So for instance, we can save this as a JPEG file. And we can make changes to this if we want, but usually the defaults are just fine. And now we can open that up and see what that looks like as a JPEG. And here it is as a JPEG. Now the only disadvantage to this is that it is read-only. We can't make any changes here. We'll have to go back into Visio if we would like to make any changes. If we choose the detailed network instead of the basic network, we'll have a lot more different shape options. But you don't need to use the detailed one if you don't want to. You certainly can go in and do a search for any types of shapes that may be missing that you may need for your diagram. So this is a basic network using Visio 2019.